Welcome along guys. Well today we're riding something a bit different. One of these. An Energica Rebel. This is new 2021 bike from Energica. I've ridden some of the Zeros before. This is the Energica version. These guys, Energica, are in the Moto E Championship. So they know a thing or two about racing electric vehicles. So we're going to take this out for a bit of a razz, see what it's like, see how it compares to the Zero equivalents, and uh, I'll let you know what I think to it. So without further ado, Chopsy, roll the intro. So first of all, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not an, a massive advocate of electric bikes. You know, I've ridden a few, I've ridden a couple of the Zero models. Um, you know, I've never ridden an Energica before. So this is my first time on the Energica. First impressions is, it's very nice actually. I think it's a, it's a bit more premium than the Zeros perhaps. Um, you know, these are expensive though. I mean, the Zeros, all the electric vehicles are expensive. Let's be honest, electric vehicles at the moment, they're a lot of money. The batteries are expensive to produce, etc, etc, etc. So the, this bike is, this is the RS version. So this one has a few little extra goodies on it. But this bike is £25,000. This is not a cheap motorcycle. This is a premium bike. The figures on this bike are quite insane. I think it's 215 newton meters of torque, which is the Rocket 3 sort of a power level. So crazy amounts of power. It's also 170 horsepower, sort of peak horsepower. A, a, a guaranteed 150 horsepower throughout the whole rev range so 170 horsepower peak 150 horsepower and 213 newton meters of torque available from zero or one rpm up to about 4700 rpm and then the torque drops as the revs rise you know as they do on electric bikes with the zero the throttle was a little bit muted as you open the throttle it was sort of very flattened off initially and you know just to make it so it didn't snap so much this is this is much more snappy that wheel's trying to come up then when you just snap it yeah the wheel does bounce a little bit it's got traction control there's six different levels of traction control i believe so, yeah, we'll have to try the traction off and see if i can wheelie this because <laughs> you couldn't really wheelie the uh the srf but that is that's much more aggressive throttle much more aggressive throttle response than that I didn't like that flattened throttle on the SRF. This does feel perhaps a bit more engaging on the throttle. Whoa, it's quick. The Zeros also felt like it was built a bit to a budget. You know, the suspension was a little bit wallowy, you know. You know, all of in that bike, I think the SRF was sort of a 20 grand bike, but you felt like all of the money, you know, went into the battery and the motor. And there wasn't much left for the suspension and stuff. Wow, because this is a 25 grand bike and this has, you know, modern, well, the, the battery and motor, it's Energica who provide the electronics, you know, the batteries, the motors to the Moto E Championship. So this is proper racing technology, Moto E technology on these bikes. So yeah, the technology in this is, I think, higher, a higher level than what is on the Zeros. Another thing with the Energica, it's got the fast charge capability. So this thing will charge much faster than the Zero, even when the Zero's got the, you know, the fast charge and everything. Wow, well, what are we doing here now? Ah, it's, it's so, when you stop, it's lovely. Very quiet, very nice. Now the big problem with electric vehicles, and, and I think, what most people say when you're talking about electric bikes is oh well, it takes hours to charge them you, know, you can't go anywhere the range is rubbish the range is reasonable on this i think you energy could claim a ridiculous mile like 200 300 kilometer range forget it you know forget it realistically i'm being told you're talking 100 miles sort of on at motorway speeds on the motorway 150 miles if you're sort of through town you know, this sort of riding you know slower speed riding 
but what is great on these these things if you can find a charger that will do it let's go a bit left here Cockgren, Cockgren. if you can find a charger which will do it and this is where we've i've picked this up from grid serve <laughs> electric facility it's incredible actually i'll show you when we get back what they what they've got going on there they don't it's a garage that doesn't sell any petrol it's electric only and with that latest technology of those fast chargers you can they can charge this at up to 25 kilowatts per hour which equates to a full charge i think in about 20 minutes and what actually what they say is for every one minute of charging will get you five miles of range that is more like it isn't it if you can charge it a decent amount in just 15 minutes that is actually getting usable that is actually getting sensible so this technology is moving on all the time and if if you can get the if the, if the charging infrastructure's there and they've got the far, the latest fast chargers a 15 20 minute charge is actually absolutely fine isn't it Whoa! <laughs> the wheels up the wheels up maybe it's on sport mode medium region <laughs> let's try that yeah that's better i've adjusted the uh, regen a bit obviously the more regen you have it's, it's engine braking basically the more regen you have the more it charges the battery up when you come off the throttle but it was a bit too it was a bit too much uh, too much for me thank you we just put it on medium and that's just like a nice amount of engine braking like a big v twin amount of engine braking yeah i can live with that and we charge the battery power <laughs> jeez oh the wheels up guys it's quick you know it's got that is fast that is what's nothing well i don't think anything petrol powered has that initial grunt like that i think it feels like the super duke really it's that sort of power level super duke type grunt bit of gravel bit of gravel but the throttle response is yeah, it's nice it's quite direct it's not too softened it's got loads of punch the brakes are also nice on this it's got decent brembo i think it's got the decent m4 brembo brakes yeah very good very nice actually it's i'm not getting the feeling that there's anything you know there's not been cost cutting happened in, in the production of this bike you don't i don't feel like it's you know wallowy the suspension's not quite a bit inadequate but it shouldn't be it's a 25 thousand pound motorcycle i don't want to get off it and think well that could be better this could be better it's got to be perfect yeah, even on these really rough little roads that suspension is plush it's nice very nice and you can spec these up what i do like about these you can spec them exactly how you want you want olins on it spec Olin's on it you want OZ forged wheels on it spec the OZ forged wheels you know it's fully customizable <laughs> it's definitely more of a rider's bike you know I think if I want to compare it to the SRF the SRF felt you know a little bit like you know a, a, a commuter you know it, it didn't have that real rider's bike feel to it I think this is this is definitely more of a rider's machine better feedback <laughs> better throttle response better suspension better brakes better feel from the from the tarmac and for a 260 kilo bike you know that weight is low down and the batteries are low in the bike so even though it's 260 kilos which sounds like an obscene amount of weight you know, it's gs sort of weight <laughs> it's really flickable really agile whoa wheels up the zero wouldn't do that yeah this is nice actually this is fun this is a lot of fun yeah i've got no uh 
nice sound, you know, I've got no V4 burbling. I've got what sounds like a milk float, but... <laughs> Other electric bikes I've ridden, you, you sort of... It's a bit of a one... They've been a bit of a one-trick pony, yet they're quick. But you get a little bit bored with that. Because they're just... They don't do anything else apart from go fast. And of course, you know, the economy and all that side of it. But from a rider's point of view, from an engagement point of view, they're just, they're just fast. I don't really handle, I don't give you massive feedback. This is actually fun to push around. When I've been on other electric bikes, I've just ended up slowing down and enjoying the scenery you know, and the quiet. And it's been more about the journey and less about the bike. This is about the ride, about the bike still. <laughs> it's so fast and you get you in all sorts of trouble actually. Which way, sir? Which way? The front wheel's up over the crests. <laughs> this, this road is quite mad as well. I can't really tell you much about range. This is, this is just a first ride. What I may do is see if we can borrow this versus the the SRF maybe, or the SRS, and do a comparison with you with Greg, and let's compare these two together. Two of the uh, you know, the premium naked electric bikes, let's put them head to head and see which is best. Let's see if this is worth the extra four grand more than the SRF. I think that could be interesting. If you are interested in an electric bike, whoa, that'll be a comparison you want to see. There she is, it has changed colour. <laughs> <laughs> the one I was on has been taken out by somebody else. So this is the non-RS version. This is a different colour, obviously. This is a grey, but slightly different to the RS. This is the, the base one, but it's more or less the same. So at the front end, we've got the Brembos. These are the M40s, I believe. These are the same calipers which are on my Hypermotor. They're, they're very nice, actually. They're not the brand new style emas, but they're not far off. Marzocchi forks. Here we have the, uh, the battery, part of the battery here. And here, here's the radiator for the water cooling. And actually, it doesn't get that warm, the water cooling. I think it's actually for the motor, the water cooling. The battery is air-cooled, it's the motor which is water-cooled. So that is the motor, that is like the drive transfer, I think. And there's actually oil in here, you can see. There's a little sight glass here. So there's actually oil in there. You have to change the oil in the transfer box every 28,000 miles, so, so not very often. The battery is obviously big. <laughs> the battery starts at the bottom of the bike, goes right up here, you know, right to the front. There's a lot of battery. I do like this sort of light on the, the charging indicator on the tank. That's quite a nice little touch, I do like that. Steel trellis frame, all the welds look decent on it, you know. Nice red, bit of Ducati, Ducati red on the frame. Little grills on the rear. Yeah, it looks sporty. Little grills down the side as well. Sort of styling-wise, I think it looks very nice. The seat, sort of Alcantara finish to the seat, looks nice. And sort of overall, looking at the bike, I mean, it's pretty nicely styled. Got a screen on it, practical. Obviously, LED headlights. Looks okay. A little bit Johnny Five, maybe. Bit of a Johnny Five flavour. Johnny Five is alive. They also do a sports bike version of this. This is the sort of the naked, the naked, super naked equivalent, if you like. They do a full-on sports bike of this. The sports bike version has 150 miles an hour top speed, and I think it's 0 to 60, 2.8 seconds. So 2.8 seconds. That's quick. That is fast. Unfortunately, they haven't got any demos of that because when they have, I'm going to be riding that. But this is the naked version, the big wide bars. The bars are really wide on this. It's, it's a very comfortable position. This feels a bit like the Street Fighter. You're upright a little bit, you know, you've not, you're not cantered forward. It feels very much like the Street Fighter from a, a comfort point of view. You know, the pegs are in a sensible position. It's roomy. It feels like a lot of bike in front of you. It's a very comfortable riding position. Big wide bars. Little TFT looks a lot like the uh, the older Tuono dashboard that like, like Womble's dash on his Tuono. I think that's the same 
dash the same lights up here the same switch gear as what was on the uh, dragster the other week it's that same with the, exactly the same switch gear cruise control it's got heated grips as well but this same single button cruise control i don't like this switch gear i think it's the same switch gear actually that was on the uh, sr si roads wow blimey they threw me off the back that's a 60 miles an hour Fifty. Whoa! The wheel comes up when you get, and it's eighty instantly. That is fuck. That is grunt. I think that would out. I could even out drag the Super Duke on initial punch. That. That is incredibly pokey. Mmm. Overtaking grunt. Incredible. You've got to be careful. You don't run in the back of the person you're trying to overtake. We've all heard the announcements. I think there's no more petrol motorbike sales after 2035, is it? 2035 or is it 2030? You will not be able to buy a petrol powered motorcycle, brand new. So that is uh, a bit worrying for us bike lovers. This has given me hope that when that does happen, you're still going to be able to buy a bike which delivers excitement, delivers thrills, yet you've got no noise. That is a big part of motorcycling, the noise, the engine sound, yeah, the ca that character which comes from having different petrol powered engine configurations. I love it, you know, I love that and that will be devastating when that disappears and, and we go electric. But, you know, that, that's, that's 15 years away. If these, if you can buy bikes today, which are as engaging and as fun as this, it does give me hope that we'll be all right. Motorcycling is gonna be all right in the future. Once the infrastructure's properly in place and you haven't got to mess about with apps to pay, and you can just use your card to pay, which you can. We'll do some of that in a minute. We'll prove that you could do that on one of these. Then uh, that's the way, you know, and I've sort of said, you know, for me, electric vehicles, I've said it's not quite there for me. To, to invest my own money, it's a bit early for me in the, in the technology, but this is definitely going in the right direction. And if you really want an electric bike, this is actually very, very good. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared about that. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this. Let's pull over. I'm gonna fill. I'm gonna fill it. Charge it here. You cannot buy petrol here. This is a hundred percent electric service station. One of these new grid serve things. All of these are high speed chargers. What's this one? Up to ninety kilowatts. Up to three hundred fifty kilowatts. This side. Let's have a go at charging here and see. I'm at fifty-two percent battery. Thirty-four miles range. Let's see how long it takes to charge. There's a key. key goes underneath. Ah, well that, that had me stumped already. I couldn't work hard to get the key up. So, like, he says. That way, yeah. ah, okay. Uh, so and that's your goodies. So this is the AC. Yep. Is the, uh, that's your standard sort of slow home charging. And yep. you can use AC charge out about, but that's a, a slow charge, eight hours probably longer than that. That's your DC. That's the DC so fast charge. Together, 
CCS. Okay. Which is the, mo which is the, the new kind of, or well not new, it's going to be uh, the most prevalent type of charge uh, for a car and bikes. Oh, really? So they're sort of standardising it on. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, and then this is the, the best thing about it. it it's just. Like that. You've got to bring it around this side. Yep. Like Plug it in. And you just use your card. Oh, that's what, no apps, no nonsense. That's what you need, isn't it? DC fast charging initialization. Okay. It's not, like I said before, sometimes it takes it, we, I had to do it a couple of times to get it to work last time. It just, it's basically an electronic handshake. Yeah. It's only got to be slightly off and it, and it won't like it. Um, but I think last time I just reset it and it, and it went. And it went. But it might be okay. Well, the other thing is, there you go, right. there you go. we're in. So, so 20 minutes to charge that up yeah. from 50%. But, but, this will, but this will increase. Ah, uh, see. Um, it's at 14, this goes to 25. Okay. Um, it's dependent on how hot the battery is right now, and also it's kind of a sloping, so if it'll start charging and gradually ramp up, and then it'll ramp down. Uh, yeah, okay. So usually, you know, okay, so that, that's charging at 14 kilowatts, and it, it can go up to 25 kilowatts depending how hot the battery is and all that. We set it at 75 amps. 75 so amps. 46 amps charging. So okay. Up to right. Okay. Um, but, um, but that's saying 18 minutes to, yeah. to charge it. That's not bad. You get a coffee and you're off again, aren't you? That's pretty good. Yeah. I like that as well. That oh, does it? So that yeah. goes up as it charges. Yeah, it's charged, it's oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah.